If I were to hand each of you a single sheet of origami paper, what shape would you make? You might choose to make a paper crane, a goldfish, or a whole host of other things. The same sheet of paper begins with the potential to become any shape, and it's only by folding it in a precise way that it is given an identity. As embryos, our stem cells face a similar question. What cell type will they become? There, there is a variety in stem cells as diverse as the variety in origami folding. They can become anything from a cell that will make your heart beat to one that will form memories in your brain. It is up to your DNA to, under, to decide what each cell will become. However, given that every single cell in our body contains an exact copy of our DNA, how is diversity achieved? Part of the explanation lies in a fact that I've always found mind-boggling. If you were to take the DNA from just one of our cells and measure it end to end, it'd be two meters long. That's taller than I am. For it to be possible for, such, for so much material to fit into each of our tiny cells, it needs to be compacted by being folded over and over again. And as it turns out, there is an origami style precision to this folding. Along with, along with housing all of our genes, our DNA also contains elements that act as on and off switches. Folding DNA allows our genes to come into contact with these switches and have their expression turned on or off. The combination of genes that are expressed will determine the function and identity of a cell. So the DNA in your heart cells will be folded differently to the DNA in your brain cells. Scientists have only recently discovered the tools needed to visualize DNA folding and are now using these to decipher the folding instructions required to make each cell type. These instructions will add an extraordinary new layer to the way that we understand our DNA and the fundamentals of human life. To contribute to this in my PhD, I am studying the proteins responsible for making the folds in the DNA. We know that multiple proteins are essential to this, but we don't understand the differences between them. I am trying to detangle these by teasing out the role of one of them, known as CTCF. I am doing this by removing CTCF from multiple cell types and recording the effects this has on DNA folding and cell function. What I've found is that CTCF is involved in making the early folds in the procedure. These look to be present in all cell types and lay the foundation for the more specific folds to follow. And with this work, we're one step closer to understanding the art of DNA folding. Thank you.